Hello, Colonel Blaine. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so you're going to be talking later about soldier system solutions. Yes, perhaps if you could give us a bit more detail. Yeah, we're looking at uh, this discussing and presenting the Australian approach to integrated soldier system solutions, uh, how we're looking at modernisation concepts and that continual enhancement of our soldier combat systems, uh, and particularly focused on the close combatant. Um, yes, you were talking about ins the ensuring integration being quite an important point. How do you deal with that as opposed to the more modular system which may not be quite as integrated but allows of course for quick changes? Yeah, well, integration and, and uh, modularisation are two different aspects of what we do with the soldier combat system. Uh, the integration of that soldier and what he carries on him uh, is a key area. and That's more about configuration management and how we manage the configuration of the soldier. Uh, the modularisation or modularity of what the soldier carries and how he can carry it allows us to have more, uh, I suppose, say in that configuration management. And what would you say have been the biggest challenges to date? Um, well, to date, it, it is integration. Now, if you look at, the, I think, the next three big challenges for us in the Australian Army, it's integration, integration, integration. Uh, it's looking at integration uh, on the soldier as a soldier combat system, integration uh, in that soldier within that fire team or within that tactical small unit, and then the next level of integration of the soldier, that tactical small unit, with the combat team and higher. So how we actually have a hierarchy of integration, how we ensure that we are all uh, working on the same uh, end uh, outcome is very important to all the projects we're looking at at the moment. Um, what are you doing uh, to ensure soldier acceptance? Well, that's a key issue. Uh, we have learnt through our operational experience that the user must be confident with the equipment he has. Otherwise, he won't use it, he won't trust it, uh, and there'll be you know, issues that we will see coming our way uh, because of poor user acceptance. So we engage all the time with the soldier. We engage with soldiers, we engage with the commanders, ensuring that we're getting user feedback uh, that informs our decision making in regard to the modification of equipment. So what have been the, the major, I suppose, issues, with, particularly with regard to the soldier acceptance side of things? What are the things they've been coming back and saying that you're going to be changing as the project continues? Well, look, soldiers want to be mobile, they want to be agile, they want to ensure that they can do their primary role, especially as close combatants, which is fighting. Uh, you don't want technology and great novel solutions uh, inhibiting the way they can actually perform their basic role. So it's key for us to ensure we don't approach a Christmas tree effect where we give soldiers some great piece of equipment, some great technology, uh, but at the end of the day it ain't going to improve the way he fights. It ain't going to support the way he actually delivers that lethal effect on the battlefield. So we've got to be very careful that we don't allow our solutions for what we see as important technological issues, especially in the C4I space, uh, overcoming the requirement uh, for a soldier still to commit his basic principle of fighting. And what's your approach towards uh, continual enhancement? Well we need to have an adaptive acquisition concept where we are continually adapting our equipment the way we see the threat adapting, the environment changing. So as we see the threat changing its, uh, its method of operations, as we move to different environments, we've got to be in a position where we can adapt our equipment and our procurement processes to give the soldiers the equipment they need for that environment. And how have you managed to structure that into these long-term projects? Well, it's all about understanding when you actually have to deliver uh, into a cycle of force generation. Uh, importantly, having these great solutions requires you to ensure that they're being delivered uh, in a time they can be trained with. No use sending stuff on operations to soldiers who are in the fight. It must be done well left of that and our aim is to ensure that we are finding timelines and schedules where modification and iteration of equipment is being delivered to the soldier in a timely fashion where he can train with that and then deploy. So looking at smaller suppliers, the fact that they're often the ones bringing the key innovations, what would you say are the three new technologies that you've come across this year? Look, uh, engagement with industry and finding those novel uh, designs and solutions is critical. Uh, we won't be able to uh, you know, find all the solutions we need by doing in-house research and development. Engaging industry is a critical component of how we modernise the soldier and how we continue this adaptive acquisition uh, process. This year we looked at some novel uh, concepts. We're looking at what the British are using in pelvic protection and that's a great concept and one I think that really does provide a level of personal protection that we haven't seen before. 
Uh, we're looking at our ballistic uh, armour and helmet design as well, and also how we reduce weight load through uh, water purification systems. So those areas there all provide us an opportunity to reduce weight uh, while at the same time increasing protection of our soldiers. Well, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing your presentation later. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.